there's always a debate of how do you know where you draw the line? When do you when do you record? When do you not record? And I think I think for a while that kind of like took over, and that kind of became a priority of living for the shot and not shooting the life. So today I'm not alone, I'm joined by another fellow Catholic YouTuber, my man, David. David, can you tell everybody what you do? Because it's um, changed like a million times. I'm, uh, I'm a movie maker. I think that <clears throat> I, I use the term movie maker because um, everyone can make a video. The video doesn't have to be good or bad or complete or a whole thought. Anyone can make a video. My mom can make a video. My mom does make videos, I guess. Um, but there's a difference between knowing and having the skill and the, and the talent and the eye and know what separates a video, which is just like a file that you can do anything with. Um, there's a difference between that and there's a difference between a movie, which is a, a, a thought, a story. Um, I don't call myself a, a filmmaker because I think that the difference between a movie and a film is that you know you're a filmmaker when someone pays to see your film. Um, in, in a public setting, in a theater, they pay $22 a ticket to see a, see a movie. Um, so hopefully one day I can be a filmmaker, but for now I'll just stick to making movies. So with movie making, what does that exactly entail? So like, what is the, the process that you do to create movies? Because most of your stuff is like cinematic events, and how do you create a story out of that? Just images. Um, you know, I think that I started out being a vlogger, um, and I think I did that because I wanted to preserve these little sequences of time and memories that I wanted to play back when I was like 50 um, and show them to my kids, my friends, and my family. Um, I think um, <clears throat> having that overwhelm me and kind of like stepping back and looking at everything that I had done and accomplished in that time, I think that I kind of shifted and now I'm at a point where I think I'm just making, I'm just making, I call them markers, just calling, calling them markers. I'm making little markers. Um, that I can just go back and visit. I think the difference in being a, a movie maker is, is the same, I think, with, with all artists. Um, there's really no difference between me and a painter or a writer or a sculptor. Um, it's just a different medium, a different format in which, you know, whatever that, whatever's inside your brain is expressed. I wanna, I wanna remember certain moments in a certain way, so I put certain music and I do certain cuts, and it's just about painting this picture that I want to remember without altering the original picture. What do you mean by altering the original picture? I mean, that's always been like the constant debate with YouTube, obviously, specifically with like people who record and post their entire lives. I think that since I've gone, since I've, since I've come to college, I think that my camera has become kind of a part of me, something that I really don't go anywhere without really, something that I think that I always like to have with me. Um, and then obviously there's always a debate of you, you, you have to know whether where, 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 where. <laughs> there's always a debate of how do you know where you draw the line when do you when do you record when do you not record and I think I think for a while that kind of like took over and that kind of became a priority of living for the shot and not shooting the life. So a lot of people, especially like. Catholics are trying to do the daily vlog style. Do you think it's possible then to be able to, like, especially for Catholics, like if we're trying to like live the faith in the gospel every day, it's kind of hard when you're trying to record everything as well. Again, it's about being a good Catholic, not for the camera, but being a good Catholic with a camera. Mm. It's about not altering your life at all, but just having like an extra set of eyes that just documents things. I think dailies are interesting. I think daily daily recordings, daily vlogs, daily uploads, um, well one are very, very tedious. Um, it's not easy. I even if even if you're not on trending, my respect to any daily any person who daily uploads. Um, I did it for five days, I couldn't do it. I, I tried through seven, I broke at five, I couldn't. It was not easy. And again I think that it's it's about it's you know it's a problem when it becomes that that like invisible order mm -hmm. in your head of like, okay, I need to do this so that I can record it. So if you're like a Catholic YouTuber specifically like making videos about like, like what you do, like the Catholic faith and teachings and doctrines and like um, 
just general in, like inquisitions that people have about the faith and people who already know about the faith come and like discuss things. There, there's, an, there's an issue when you, when you think that, okay, I have to go to mass because I have to record or I have to go, I have really bad handwriting so I'm gonna have my girlfriend write in my Bible so that I can record and it looks pretty. Mm. There's a difference between making your life visually appealing as a Catholic just for other people to be inspired by you and there's something a lot more genuine, I think, in actually being a good Catholic and letting that just stand by itself. So, like, not predefining your yes. life as a Catholic, so, like, being really real. Because I think that, in a lot of ways, the Catholic faith, for one, more than a lot of other religions, is not the prettiest religion. It's had a lot of ups and downs, and it's had a lot of good times and really bad times, and again, it's just like... <clears throat> like we say in Mass, look on, look not on the sins, but on the faith of your church. It's always been this this constant thing with with daily vloggers. It's about making your life look pretty, and life isn't always pretty. I think that's one thing that I I try to make it come through in my videos, is that life isn't always about. I didn't get a name, Mom. I'm sorry. I didn't go to bed on time. I didn't. <laughs> I go to Taco Bell late, and I stay up here, and I do homework, and I make videos, and it's not always glamorous. It's not always. It's not always nice to see, but it is what it is, and you just you got to do what you can with it, honestly. So, with that, who are some of your inspirations that inspired you to start doing the, what you call movie making? <laughs> um. Who? I'm gonna go to YouTube subscriptions. <laughs> I'm gonna go to YouTube subscriptions really quick. You can. It's like a JVT said. Uh, tell me, uh, tell me a, what you read, and I'll tell one. you who you are. Just tell me what you watch, and I'll tell you who that's you are. That's kind of difficult, actually. Okay, let me see subscriptions. Oh, um, Casey Neistat oh. is a huge one. Um, and the father I think of vlogging. I, you know, I never realized until I had that shift in like my perspective of like. What it, what, what it is I'm actually doing. There is no way around it, story is king. Story is king. Everything serves the king. All of this is just here to serve the story. Any art is just focused on telling a story, it's just in a different format, it's just in a different medium. The way that he prioritizes and makes it feel so natural and so flowed um, is something that I really admire. It's not always the prettiest, it's not always shot on the best camera, it's not shot on a red. He shoots, he shoots viral videos on like little point and shoots at like $100. And they're still great because they tell a story. And it's, it's amazing because he, I think it's a very, very human experience, like when you think about it. What do you mean? There's something about the humans, like the way humans are raised, specifically I think with like fairy tales, that kind of like dopes our mind and like confuses our mind into like expect this like fairy tale looking world when we get out of like school mm -hmm. or high school or just like whenever we whenever that bubble is popped we're expecting this like grandeur of life and it's not that and i think that the way that specifically in any art form i think the way filmmaking is different is specifically with an editor your job, if you're good at your job, you will never get recognition. Your job is to make things look natural to an entire human being. And what's so interesting about that is that that's one thing that not, uh, not many other things can do. Because so, every person is so different, but every person understands stories. And there's something in the human brain that connects all of us through that something very primal, something very like instinctive that even if you've never seen Cinderella, even if you grew up in California or you grew up in Ghana, it connects in you and it feels wholesome and it doesn't feel different. You're not uncomfortable. You're like, you're soothed by mm -hmm. the fact that this is a complete thought and I can understand this thought in every single direction. Doesn't matter where I look, and every time that I watch it, I watch something different. I learn something new. I mean, we, I've spent like, we spent so many hours up here just like doing editing sessions because like, and nobody, people don't understand that. Like, I'll, I'll be recording a video, my mom's like, aren't you done? It's like, nah, I have to edit now. My, and that's my, like another four or five my, hours my parents, my parents, I really never got it until I went home for Christmas break and I made my New Year's video. And I did not leave my room for like three days. Yeah. I ate in there, I didn't go to the bathroom for like a day and a half. Um, and they're like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm making this video. And I'm like, okay, 
are you done? And I was like, no. <laughs> you never finished. I'm not done. And then I showed it to them, and it was like five and a half minutes. And they're like, oh my god, that's so cute. How long did it take you? I was like, th three. That, that entire time <laughs> I was in there, that's exactly what's been happening. <laughs> it's, it's such a tedious thing. And at times, what, I, what I've come to realize is that less is more mm -hmm. because of the fact that you don't want it to feel gimmicky. So like the 80-20 rule? Yes. Yes. I don't, I don't want to be as interjecting, as forceful as like Jake Paul is. Ooh, yeah. And I don't want to be as loose as if I were doing like a live stream. Okay. I want it to feel fast paced. I want to go to the good stuff. I want to go to the meat and potatoes, but... It doesn't have to be perfectly polished. It doesn't have to be perfect. And the, 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 the good thing about video editing is that people don't expect it to be because you're not Quentin Tarantino mm -hmm. and you're not Tim Burton and you're not all these people. Do you think that's what separates different like YouTubers from the, from the like mediocre YouTubers to the stellar 10 million subscriber YouTubers is just if you can make a story out of the raw materials you created through the film, through like the raw film that you shot on? I mean, I think this, I think the system's been changed. I think the system's a lot different than it was like 20 years ago. Um, I'm not even 20 years old, but whatever. Um, obviously, there's become this kind of addiction to super high energy content and super, like, here you go. Do I respect it? I do, I respect, I respect anyone who can make it. I respect anyone who can make it through and survive because it is a very difficult, very, it's very difficult to get there. One of the things that I always loved that my parents told me as a kid was that anyone can make it, not everyone can stay. Mm. Everyone can make it to the top, but if you can stay there, that means that you've not only done what you wanted to do well, but you've been able to change. And I don't think that change should be something that should be feared. I think it's, I think it's in and of itself it's scary because that's like a thing that I struggle with. I like to know where things are going. I'm not like super OCD when it comes to like planning stuff and like times and stuff, but I like to know a general idea of what I can and can't control and exercise control as much as I possibly can. And change is something so like naturally op like the opposite of that. It's so reciprocating of that that it makes me motivated to just like take the leap. Uh, not a YouTuber, music is very, very great. Oh it's very gosh. inspirational to me specifically. If I had to give one artist my my appreciation when it comes to my craft, it'd probably be Khalid. I mean, you know, he's, he's it's, it's very much, it's, he, he very much gets the struggle. I've never had the opportunity to talk to him. If I ever do, I'll, I'll let you know what he says. You'd but, probably cry. Um, I'd cry. Before he dropped his first album, which by the way is fantastic. I know oh, the entire so album, good. my memory. I know the entire album. Um, before he dropped it, he had been making music for like 10 months. He doesn't even read music. <laughs> He has people come in and like, he makes sounds and then they just make it into music. <laughs> so it's just about getting what's in your head and in your heart just like onto something. Ooh, I like that. It's putting, it's putting what you feel and what you think on something, whether that's on a computer or on a canvas or something. It is a very draining lifestyle. It is a very, very draining just set of events that just really leaves you just like exhausted and tired. Um, who else? But I mean, we've become addicted to like that tired lifestyle. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Like um, people say it's crazy, but we honestly like thrive. On I mean, I don't think I get addicted to like the tiredness. I hate the tiredness. Oh, yeah. I hate, I hate staying up late and making edits. I hate when files corrupt. I hate when hard drives oh. corrupt. I hate when um, mics don't turn on. I hate when uh, I leave it in manual instead of autofocus. I hate, there's so many problems that go into it and I think one of the things that I learned in high school with a filmmaking teacher that I had was that filmmaking is just a series of solving problems. <laughs> Get that on a t-shirt. It's, it's really just, it's, there's so many ups and downs and there's so many obstacles that you never, ever, ever see. And that's the beauty of it really, I think is that like, it's just, it's just a click, honestly. And I think it's so easy nowadays to get any any amount of just like attention that you could possibly want on the internet because there are so many people on the internet it's, it's ridiculous i don't think i'm addicted to the tiredness what i'm addicted to is the creation i'm addicted to just 
I, I really, I don't know the verse, but I, I'm fascinated by the fact that my mother used to tell me when I was growing up, the greatest day of my life will be the last day. Mm. And it's because no matter how much I've struggled, no matter how much life has beat me down, no matter what's gone on, I can do exactly what God did. I can step back, look at what I've made, look at what I left behind, and rest. And I love that. I love that my entire life is going up to this moment where I can be like, in this aspect, I am like God. I love that. That fascinates, that blows my mind. So I think I've translated that to like my craft and it's like all of this struggle, all of these cuts, all of these reruns, oh my God, how many, I know every single video I've ever posted by heart. I know I memorize all of it and it's not because I sit down and like, Okay, I'm gonna watch it nine times straight. It's just because okay, we gotta cut, then we gotta rewatch the timing and the recut. You have and watched music. it nine times straight. <laughs> just editing it. I, when is this gonna be released? Good. When is this gonna uh, be? A couple weeks. Okay, I, I just posted a video a few weeks ago about my freshman year. I think I started that thing like a month and a half ago. Oh my gosh! I've made like four cuts. I've made like four different files, four different rough cuts over and over and over and over you just want to make sure that what what's in your head comes out as accurate as possible on this computer mm -hmm. because what's in your head may not be understood by everyone that watches it but it's what you think and i don't think you should ever let go of your artistic integrity and your artistic license to satisfy your audience so then why why is it so important to create something that's in your head. Like, I feel like a lot of people who aren't artists don't understand that idea, you know? Why, why, would, why would we put ourselves through so much torment just to get something from here to there? I think the difference between artists and not artists is that moment, and I'm pretty sure almost every artist has it, that moment that you're like, holy crap, this does not exist. It's in my head, and it does not exist anywhere else. No one in the existence of time, no one in history, not Albert Einstein, not Stephen Hawking, rest in peace, um, yeah. not Isaac Newton, nobody ever can ever come up with this idea before me because it doesn't exist yet. Are you going to let it go away? Or are you going to figure out how to make that real? And I'm, I'm, everyone has the capacity to do it. Everyone thinks completely differently. Everyone has life experiences that unless shown to me or tried to be explained to me in some way, whether it's with a sit-down story or a poem or a painting or a video, or I'll never understand. I'll never understand like what it's like to be in the military family. I have no idea what that's like. But if you can make a 20-minute video explaining how, how that's impacted you and what, that, and what that actually looked like, I can see okay, and this time he was tired, and this time he was happy. Everyone has the capacity to do it because everyone can tell stories in a ton of different ways. It's just the people who recognize the fact that, oh my God, I can actually make something that will help other, other people, that will help other people understand what this felt like. That's all it is, it's really not, or at least it shouldn't be about wanting to be the next Picasso, mm -hmm. or be the next Van Gogh, or be the next Casey Neistat. It shouldn't be about replicating somebody else. It should be about being completely different and completely independent because that's what you are. No one, no one besides Casey Neistat is like Casey Neistat. No. A lot of people try. A lot of people try. No one besides Sam Colder is Sam Colder. A lot of people try. A lot of people try. What but happens is good. It never sticks. Yeah. It never sticks. That's why. Because they're not authentically themselves. Because it's not, it's not what you are. So you're saying then that like being an artist is just making beauty. It's just making your beauty. Mm -hmm. That's pretty deep. T-shirt? Thank oh, no. you. And then if you want to go even deeper, it's just, oh, you want to go further totally deeper, crap. it's literally just, you're a prism, right? And then you have two people on either side of you. You're a prism and you're, you're in the middle and you have two people on either side of you. One is God and one is humanity. Mm -hmm. God gives you white light and you just break it up and show uh, everybody else. That's and that cool. rainbow is different for everybody else. Yeah. That light spectrum is completely different for every single person. No person can have the exact same, no two people can have the exact same separation. 
And that's something I feel like a lot of people diss YouTubers for, is that we're very self-centered, we're making videos about ourselves, we have to have a huge ego, all of that. Like, is that, that I guess that's not true then. We're just trying to show... It, I, I feel like it beauty. shouldn't be. It's sad that it is true. Um, it's sad that, like, I wish it wasn't so rigged. I wish, this, I, I wish the system was the way it should be, I guess. It's sad to see that, like, such a big, big, big focus of art specifically has become money. And the fact that money is so, so important to just survive. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's troubling to see, especially for someone who wants to do this for the rest of their life. Um, because I can't just make art. I have to figure out how to be a businessman and make money <laughs> making art. So I have to go and figure out if I can work for an agency or work in an industry or work with a marketing firm or an advertising firm or make my own business or something. And I think that's really the reason that I'm in college. Because I don't, I, I very much think that for art, a degree is not required. Mm -hmm. But to sell it. But I'm here to learn how to make money doing what I love. I'll never forget it. I was nine years old and we were visiting my neighbor and he would like paint. He liked to paint. So I saw this like painting that he made on the wall and I was like, Dad, that's really cool. And I was like, Dad, I want to be an artist when I grow up and I want to paint. And he's like, son, figure out something else because artists don't eat. So that like that always stuck with me and that always like stuck in my brain and I was like, okay. If I'm gonna do this, I gotta figure out how to make money at it, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna sell it, and I gotta figure out how that's gonna affect the product that I'm selling. Because I can't lose my artistic integrity, but I need to make sure that what I sell can sell. And that isn't about being a sellout, or being someone who compromises for what a viewer wants to see, but making sure that my vision and my thought and my idea and my vision and my, my aesthetic or whatever, it, act, it like fully, fully punches through and shines through. And that's what comes out. So then if somebody wants to start doing YouTube or being an artist, what do you think is the one piece of advice you would give them? Don't be scared. Start. Um, <clears throat> if you want to head over to my channel, if you can put that in there somewhere. It's going to be right there. I'm 18 right now. Um, I picked up a camera the first time. I got my first camera halfway through junior year of high school. If it's something that you really think that you can do and something that you really want to do, Go, just just start. No one is no one is in, no one has the right to tell you you shouldn't do this. No one has the right to tell you that you can't express yourself this way. No one has the right to tell you that. Who do you think you are going into YouTube? Something that's like so new, but also so developed as a new person, as like a newcomer, as a newbie or a noob or whatever. Someone who's unexperienced. Everyone was unexperienced. Everyone, no one was born knowing how to make movies, how to make art, how to make films. No one, everyone, everyone was a video maker. It's your, it's your decision if you want to become a filmmaker. Everyone can make videos. Do you want to be a movie maker? Do you want to be a filmmaker? That's up to you. If you want to be someone who makes films, put in the work. There's no shortcut. If you want to keep yourself like whole and unified and keep your integrity as you're doing this as a process of learning then don't try to rig the system don't use things that everyone else is using don't copy anybody don't be a follower because this platform this forum this 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 era this age is not for followers this this is for people who want to change the world and you have been born in such a great time that the, the field has been leveled. And now everybody has their shot. So if you, wanna, if you wanna make it, you can. You just have to put in the work. One of my favorite quotes ever from a video that I saw a long time ago was filmmaking. I should've gotten into it 20 years ago. And I'm gonna keep doing it until I can. And if you do that, you'll succeed. And if I don't succeed, then I can say I did try. Yeah, that's, that's that, that. I think that pretty that pretty <laughs> much sums it up, honestly. <laughs>
I think that encapsulates it pretty well. Yeah. Do you think that's how your life is? How you want to live? Um, if you could have like one like quote for your life, you think that should be it? Oh, if I could have, ooh, if I could have one quote, you know, I'm gonna have to go and never stop loving. I think that, <clears throat> I think that no matter no matter what you do, doesn't matter if you want to do biology, if you want to do sports medicine, if you want to make videos, if you want to write, if you want to do interior design, if you want to do whatever it is you want to do, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into a into a bubble first. If you're Catholic which I'm assuming this is your channel, most of you are. Whatever it is that you do, or whatever it is that you end up doing, or if your life is hard and you don't end up doing what you love, whatever it is that you love, whatever it is that you love, whatever it is that you find your passion in, whatever it, is, whatever it is that motivates you, make sure that your top priority is to show God and then show you. Therefore, if you're not Catholic, make sure your top priority is to show the truth. And the truth is that Life is not always pretty, but the only thing that there's never enough of is good and love and acceptance and work towards betterment. So yeah, never stop loving, that'd be my quote. So thank you guys for watching this video. Clearly David is kind of the bomb. So check out his channel. It's popping up there again and in the description below. That's such a weird saying. I feel like I said it so often. Like it's a, check it out in the description below. I try not to. I'm trying to like, step away from my like, YouTuber banter. It's so bad. I'm not, I'm, I'm stepping away from the YouTuber lingo. I'm not, I'm trying not to say vlogger anymore. I feel like I'm like 30. I'm a, I'm a, I'm vlogger. a vlogger guy. Um, I'm gonna be the next PewDiePie. Yeah, I know. Trying to avoid. Check out this video, like and subscribe. Stop. Link in the description. Merch down below. I Link wish in bio. Merch. I don't. I'm starting a line. I'll buy it. I it I, we'll see it. I gotta figure out how it's gonna work. But yeah, life. So thank you everybody so much for watching. And remember, as it was in the beginning, is now never shall be. Rise, Rise up and, and live. <laughs>